Welcome, my wayward witches, to day 15 of Bex's hashtag 21 days till Yule. Though the solstice has come and gone, I've truly enjoyed creating videos for the hashtag started by Bex over at the Witch's Cookery, so I have a few more videos to share with you. This one is truly a gift from me to all those beautiful witches who, for various reasons, feel safe for practicing their path in private. It's an idea I crafted to allow you to come out of the broom closet and share your path openly during the holidays, but secretly, and it's through the simple use of embossed rollers and homemade dough ornaments. From my previous videos, you may be aware that I absolutely love working with embossed rollers as part of my kitchen magic workings. Each roller can hold many intentions based on what you're using it for at the time. So why not use a rose embossed roller and a gingerbread person cutout to fashion a goddess that you can place on your tree, tablescape, or wall hanging where you and only you know the energy and intention, the truth behind the workings. And if you work with male deities as well, you can select one that holds the energy associated with him. Gingerbread cutouts can also be used to represent individuals, including yourself, and set with intentions for protection, distance healing, and infusing wishes of all good things for yourself and or those in your life. I used mine as gift tags for my nieces and nephew and anointed them with protection, love, and yep, winter soap energy. I made slits wide enough to pass a ribbon through and used them to tie onto their gift packages. Stars can be used to represent the ever-present and protective energy of the pentagram, minus the circle surround, yes I know, or as the star holds the elements within, symbols of earth, air, fire, and water, and of course, spirit. If you are a bit braver, you can even inscribe the symbols on the back of the stars. Finally, for those who can practice a little more openly, it's a great and affordable way to create a moon-based mobile for your sacred space. I created two. One is a gift being sent out to someone very special. The how-to is pretty easy, although my first attempt, I thought the instructions were wrong. Turns out I was wrong for making the assumption. The recipe called for two cups of baking soda, one cup of cornstarch, and one and a half cups water. Mix the dry ingredients well in a pot and add all of the water. Dissolve the dry ingredients completely and place it on the stove on a medium low heat. Now this is where I thought the instructions might have been wrong and I was only supposed to add enough water to form a dough, so I panicked and started adding more dry ingredients. Don't do that. Now this attempt that I'm making here is the second attempt where I am following the instructions correctly. And as you can see, it will thicken up and form a dough, but you must keep stirring. Once it starts to pull away from the sides of the pot, stir on the heat for a few more seconds, then remove from the heat source and place on a trivet and continue to stir using the ambient heat from the pot itself. Flour your surface with cornstarch, but try to keep it light and minimal, once again using my tea diffuser ball to do the work, as it will dry out the dough and contribute to potential cracking. When flouring your board, this is another place that you can secret in magics. I use my ultra broom to clear all negative energy and thoughts surrounding the workings or my home during its creation. You can also draw sigils within the cornstarch based on your intentions turn the dough out and start working it with your hands, rolling it through all of those sigil magics. Keep in mind that it will be quite warm to the touch. Once you have it at the right consistency, sprinkle on some cornstarch on the board, on top of the dough and on your rolling pin and begin the process. As you're pressing the pin into the dough, transfer energy with each movement into the creation. Keep focused and your intentions clear. Is this your goddess that you're forming? Do you have a prayer that you normally say to her? Recite it either out loud or in your mind and heart as you roll out the dough and begin infusing that magic and intention, bringing her alive. 
I made my ritual ornaments a bit on the thick side, about a quarter of an inch, and I then dusted the surface once more, and with the goddess in mind, rolled out the rose pattern on the dough. I used rose because of the energy I am working with for protection, setting boundaries, and self-love. This particular goddess is actually a representation of all of the beautiful goddess women within my Patreon. It is infused with protection, the energy to set boundaries, and self-love, and it will always be represented on my altar. But you can select any of the number of designs available, and no, this is not sponsored. I just truly love working with embossed rollers. If you are so inclined, you can add in dried spices or flowers into the dough as well, or after you've cut them, you can ritually anoint oils or essential oils based on intentions, which is what I did. For the stars, I worked with my flowering vine roller. This is a great option for workings about abundance, growth, fertility, and also drawing down lunar, solar, and celestial energies. Just as the vines reach up during the day and call in that solar energy for growth, and if they're night blooming, for example, jasmines, that celestial energies of the moon, we can also. I decided to use the vine for this reason, for the moon face ornaments and the stars. Another option is the clover rolling pin. As soon as I saw it on Amazon, my mind went straight to the triquatra, one of the first tattoos I actually ever got. This symbol does mean different things to different practitioners and none are wrong. It can be worked with for protection or to symbolize the triple goddess. And I'm sure that you guys could think of other ways and feel free to leave them in the comments below. Another layer of energy and intention can be done with the use of crystal beads. I think we all have remnants of broken bracelets tucked away and this was a great opportunity for me to pull them out and work with their amazing spirits again. Red Tiger's Eye paired well with the rose patterns for the workings on protection, boundaries, and self-love, smoky quartz for protection, and larvikite for moon workings and celestial energies. It all depends on how you personally connect with the frequencies of the different crystals, because trust me, it's not as simple as what it says in all the books. I would love to hear back from you if you are a broom closet witch and how you found ways to practice in the open but in secret. Please leave your ideas below so that others can be inspired by you as well. I hope you like this idea and welcome you to join me on Patreon for a little more in-depth working each month, including a book club starting in January. My next video was filmed on the solstice and the morning after and shares a little bit about my simple rituals from those days. Till then, I wish you strength to be your authentic witchy self and love and support in doing so. I remain yours truly, the Wayward Witch.